Okay, it looks like we're live, right? Welcome to another Wire Bending Wednesday. I know it's not Wednesday, it's Thursday, but I had to postpone this because it was uh, not a good day for me yesterday. Very busy, and I think a lot of you are like that also. Uh, so today we're doing a holly with soldered C's, uh, and the soldered C's are on the bicuspids. Today, who's running video director is my son Sawyer. Say hi. He did. It's spring break. He didn't brush his hair. How's it? Is it giving us any warnings on the internet? Uh, yeah. I so. I don't know. It would pop up in the middle. That big pop up. Anyway, we may be having internet problems. So, okay, here's the model that we're going to be using today and I've already designed it and I've already prepped it and actually it was a 3D model that I duplicated and I uh, just did a simple impression with an impression tray and then poured it up in stone just so that it's easier for me to work with so I have uh, I've, I've prepped it and what I like to do is scrape distal to the uh, bicuspids right here to make a smooth landing for the wire. So this is where the soldered C is going to go right here. It's going to be just a regular labial bow. This is a pretty neat little um, appliance. Uh, it's good. It's got pretty good retention. Uh, it's not made for every single um, patient if they got you know short clinical crowns or um, let's say puffy really puffy gums that you have to deal with this is probably not good you have to do uh, Adam's clasp or something but if if they have a pretty good height clinical crown where you can engage that undercut so this is this will engage the undercut right here um, and that's where it's going to get its retention from and the, the good part about this appliance is the wires only cross one time over the occlusion between the the three and the four, the canine and the bicuspid. It doesn't cross back here. Usually there's a pretty good V uh, in between these two teeth where there's enough space to have the wire cross without interfering with the lower model. So I've already painted it once. I'm going to put one more coat of separator on before I start bending. This will be my second and final coat. I think I have chat on. Oh, hello, Greg Malone from Iowa. Can't see anything but a schematic of the Holly Looks computer generated. Hopefully, can you see anything now? Just let me know. And let me know if you can hear me. That kind of thing. I can see it now. Okay. Thanks, Greg. All right. What I'm going to use is uh, 030 wire. I like to use on this. Let me grab some from behind this camera real quick. And you're just going to bend just a regular holly. Let me put my glasses on. I like that. These aren't prescription. They're just slightly magnetized. Magnetized? Magnified? magnified thank you son for correcting I'm going to mark it about middle of the canine for this size tooth oh looks good hey thanks James yes I hear you also video is good okay good like I said those that are tuning in yet right now yes this is wire Wednesday but it's on a Thursday I was really busy yesterday, couldn't get live stream set up, so I postponed it to today, where I have a little bit of a window opportunity to do this, and we are doing a holly with soldered C's on the bicuspids. All 
right, I'm going to adapt it around. Ruben, how can I find a parallel survey table like yours or similar? I'll put a link to it. It's at greatlakesortho.com. Um, let me see if I can type that. Maybe Sawyer so can type it for me. Type greatlakesortho.com. Hit my son. He's going to type it in the chat. And I'll try to put a link to the, to the exact... Um, surveyor table and it is kind of like a surveyor table I really this is this one's my favorite uh, survey or model holder is what I call them it's got a great ball joint and uh, yep that's it that'll work he had to put spaces in it because it won't let me put links in the chat uh, but that's where you need to go to find it and I think just just do a search for model holder you'll find there's three or four of them this one and this one that obviously the springs break on you can see the difference I like this one's nice and heavy heavy duty it's got a real heavy base on it it's got a nice ball joint things spin I can get it really parallel like that yeah sorry just let me know when someone that the chat's above my head, so I gotta look up. Oh, you're welcome, Ruben. It really makes a difference, and you'll see I'm gonna use it a lot uh, in this feed on this case because I like to work on it. I'll, I'll when I get to it, I'll I'll point it out. All right, working on around. Again, this is just regular labial bow. Nothing fancy with it. Uh-oh. Someone's invading. It's Beckett. He's in his underwear. Get out of here. <laughs> well. I don't think he came up on the camera. <laughs> he kind of had a surprise look on his face, didn't he? <laughs> Just standing there in his underwear. Obviously, my sons are on spring break this week. That's why I got Sawyer helping me with the video. Hooray. And he's so excited about it. But I always told him, you know, he can use this for his own videos if he wants to. He never told me that. Well, I'm telling you now. I'm just training you how to use it first. How many viewers we got, Sawyer? Twelve. Twelve. All right. That's about right. Okay. Moving on around. Bent that the wrong direction. Sawyer, how exciting is this for you? I love staring at you working. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can hear him. <laughs> Through camera security? It's like security cameras. Kind of. Oh, it is. Yeah, he's switching all the cameras from the iPad. Uh, if anybody's interested, I'll put a, a Amazon link in the description later on after this show records of what I use for live streaming for this multi-camera setup. Which, hopefully... Sawyer's able to keep up with me with the camera changes. Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> That's a vote of confidence if I ever heard one. So one thing I want to do every week now is just kind of uh, have everybody 
let me know those that are already working in an ortho lab you know what what are you listening to what are you watching while you work uh, I was gonna let you know I, I just finished uh, hunting Hitler uh, all three seasons on the History Channel which was a very very good show very good well produced show and that has been what I've been watching late at night I've been listening to two audiobooks one with my wife we uh, we have a Sam Samsung Galaxy 8 S8 and it has dual uh, Bluetooth headphones on it and it allows you to stream to two headphones at once so we'll listen to the same audiobook so we're listening to Red Rising I think his name's Pierce Brown uh, and then on my own I'm listening to a Robert not Robert Jordan Brandon Sanderson who finished up Robert Jordan's work uh, the Oathbringer. I just realized I bent something off. Can y'all see how off that is? Right there. I'm not supposed to have that much space. But I put it all the way down. Oh, Greg, I'm very interested in Amazon link. I would like to know how you do that. Yes, I'll put. I'll be sure and put the link in the description. So check back later on. Um, Cause I don't, I don't think I can put it in in the chat. It's called Sling Studio, so you can go to uh, Sling Studio. I think it's myslingstudio.com if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you can use I've got two cell phones recording, one here up above, and then one to my left over here, and then I have a camcorder. So pretty it almost can use what you have on hand I'm using I wonder if that was what Beckett was coming in here for I'm using Beckett's is my wife's old phone a Galaxy S8 for the one of the, my cameras and uh, now it's Beckett's phone it got passed down and the dryers on dad gum every every week and it's a loud, it's a loud one too. I'm a blitz. Deborah, Deborah Lynn P. I'm currently sitting here brainstorming a retainer with a ponic for a young man with Down syndrome, I'm not needing to retain a line teeth. So thinking about a flipper retention is a problem. Yeah, a, ugh. yeah. Actually, I just have one here. I did two pontics on. It's the same thing. I was going to show this later. This is. Uh, soldered C. You can't see. I gotta clean this up. I'm letting the the crap dry on it, the heat shield. But here's two Pontics in here. Now, what I would suggest is um, what I've done before with patient problem patients is the doctor will put bands on here, and the doctor will put bands on here with a with the attachment and I'll bend a wire that engages that that bracket and so they can it can pull up against the bracket here um, I've also done Adams class so you can look at I have a video on Adams class which is a bar and it, and it engages here and here so hopefully the da the patient has I just want something aesthetically better than a labial bow yeah uh, just do this but leave off the labial bow Every tooth has dust. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you'll have to sprinkle probably pink acrylic. I think I have a video of, and I'll try to post it here later, where I have teeth here. What's that? I think that's what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where I have a, I use, I mount them, and I use a little bit of, uh, wax or something to hold the teeth in and then I'll put like 040 wire and I'll wax it to every tooth and then to the pontix and then I will remove this and those pontix are holding on by the wire and then I'll sprinkle it and then when I'm done I'll just pop off that wire and the acrylic is now is holding the teeth in so that's the only thing I can think of is 
either Adam's class or the doctor puts bands on, you put band clasp on. Uh, that's been the go-to as far as retention. So there's, yeah, no labial bow, you lose that retention. Oh yeah, here's an example of the top of band. You can see it in this impression. Uh, I would put a wire here. Can you see that, Sawyer? I put a, a wire, like a little circle, and I'll make my wire here. I'll do a little adjustment loop so the doctor can adjust it. And then go over the occlusion. I use like a 028 wire. And then it. this is a headgear tube, and the doctor it'll just click up underneath that headgear tube and hold that that retainer in yeah I work with a doctor that um, bands yes and wire slide on oh okay if you're calling this the wire slide the bracket part then yeah that would be a good clasp for you to use it's just circle here I like braces band yeah, yeah, this will be a good, and the doctor can make this as tight as possible and really hold it up against the pallet. The only bad thing is it, it may rock a little bit, so um, you can come up with almost anything to engage that. You can come from the other side if you want. Alright, let's get back to, I think I might have a video on the, bracket or something I'll see if I can see what I can find later on today the the bracket clasp oh I have it um, check out I think it's there check out designerretainer.com and you'll see a link to appliance ortho orthodontic appliance database go to there and um, you should see it I'm gonna try to pull it up real quick Yeah, see if you can Google if you're going to, the doctor is going to, sometimes it's good to, y'all both get on Google together, and you could probably Google uh, band clasp, and it should pop up. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up. Okay, so I've got the labial bow down. Oh, yeah, lateral arms. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about, about lateral arms. I have not done a video, Greg, on lab marketing, especially ortho marketing. But uh, if anybody has seen, follow anybody's on the Facebook forum for ortho lab, uh, then I you should see my the business cards I got. They're pretty cool. All right, can you see this screen, Sawyer? Uh, yeah. Can you see the computer screen? So if you go to designerretainer.com and click on orthodontic appliance database, I try to post as many pictures of unusual things as possible. All right. Nope, I don't have it in there. I thought I had a band clasp one in there. There's an Adams clasp. And you see that those don't have much retention right there. So there's an Adams clasp and it's missing all the teeth. Oh, yeah, I've done those before like small C clasp. Yeah, that that would work. Fingers around the You have no idea what I'm talking about? Nope. <laughs> Can y'all hear Sawyer or does it sound like I'm just talking to myself? I can hear myself. Alright, so I took a rubber wheel and I rounded this wire. And see if you can see this. I rounded the wire. 
this is what it looked like. So when you cut the wire, it's going to be very sharp. And I probably can't see it very well. But I rounded it, so now it's nice and smooth. That just saves you a step when you're QCing. So this is where this model holder comes in. I can lay it over at most any angle. And this, a lot of people like this a lot tighter. I like it loose. There's a screw at the bottom, and you can use it to tighten the, the ball joint. So I'm going to, what? Am I mumbling? We all at home saw him yelling at his mumbler. Sarah, I really hate making Adam's clasp. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, this is what I use, preformed Adam's clasp. They look like this. But I do have a video on making, it's actually one of my most popular, because I think a lot of people don't like making, making Adam's class, but it's one of my most popular, is uh, how to make an Adam's class from a straight piece of wire. But I tend to use these, they go a little bit quicker. But you, you do need to learn how to make an Adam's class clasp from straight uh, wire, because you, you'll be able to bend these faster. And of course they come in all different sizes. All right, so I'm going to continue my C-clasp here. So I'm just running this wire along this gingiva. Remember, I've cleaned that gingiva a little bit so that it um, is smooth and I can lay the wire on. Yes, Sarah, the washer is going again in the background. Thank you for that. Alright, so you can kind of see what I did there. You can hear Sawyer a little. You have to scoot up huh? if he wants to be heard. You have to scoot up, so. Seems like to be a little low today, and yes, we can hear him. Sound seems to be a little I just low. It up. Oh, on your end? Okay. Thank you, Sawyer. Yes. Steve! So you can see I've, can you see it on the top, Sawyer, this picture? Yeah. I've, I've contoured it and I've made a 90 degree bend and I've gone parallel with this wire. So this is something new I learned with the last lab I worked at and I, I really liked it. Uh, really simplifies the whole process. I used to bend the wire here, cross over 90 and then wax it over here. But now that I use this Zap It stuff, again insert link to my video, uh, on Zap It and Steve has a link to a video. At least we know you have clean clothes. It, James, it does smell good in here when the washer's going. Yeah, it definitely, that's one of the benefits of having a laundry slash lab slash laundratory. So I'm going to mark this wire. You like that? Laundratory? I'm going to mark this wire right where this starts veering off from the main wire here. Laundry has to get done. I Yeah, true. Hey Steve, is the uh, is the chat scrolling on top of the I assume it is cuz you're you're in there. I think you said last time it wasn't doing it. So this is where I like to use this model holder, lay it flat like this, so that you know the gravity will just hold that clasp in place. And then I have my Z base that I'm going to use, and I'm going to put a couple dots on here to hold it down. I couldn't do this method with just wax. The wax would melt when you're trying to solder it. So I use this stuff to hold the wires on. Come on now, get out of there. All right. I love your dedication. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good work, man. I love your dedication. It 
Yeah, just staying after it. Uh, and if y'all didn't know, I made a New Year's resolution. At the beginning of this year, I was going to do a live stream every week for a year. And just to see how it goes. And also get my money's worth out of this system I got. Alright, I put two little drops of this Zap It stuff. The Sino Acrylate. I put my drip my activator on. I like using this bottle for my activator. It's got a needle tip. There's they also have a spray. The spray actually it sets up just a little bit faster, but then you get it all over your fingers and I don't like that. Alright, so now I'm gonna go to the other side. So you see where I'm going at. I like a 90 degree bend, and I'm gonna try to get solder all the way up and down this and around that 90 degree bend to really lock it in. So other side. Around my wire. Oh, I see Sawyer. <laughs> It's scrolling. When I touch my finger on the screen, I, I can scroll the entire track. Oh, sweet. Well, what I did this time is I didn't monetize it from the beginning. So there's no ads popping up. I'll just I'll do those add those later. And supposedly soon YouTube's going to update the live stream where it'll save all this live chat and it'll scroll right alongside it uh, when you're watching it again. Are you are you getting my attention? Or just hitting my chair? Okay. Uh, again, go through this. So we're see, see if you can see this part. So I bent it's just a simple little C curve. I laid in in between the teeth in the embrasure area, right on along the wire. I just the gum line I just cleaned up. And instead of going straight across, I start my curve up, and then I do a ninety. And this will look different on every tooth. Sometimes teeth are real tall, sometimes they're real short. So I've made my 90 degree bend. There's a lot of people here in India who praises your wire bending tutorial. So amazing. Oh, I appreciate that. I hope it helps out a lot. And, and check out Steve Zara, Zara Dental Lab, the comment right above. Check out his channel. He's got a bunch of videos too. And every one of us has our own methods, and uh, be sure and watch all of them. You know, my wire bending, his wire bending, you'll find something that really uh, calls to you. Everybody's just a little bit different. So I'm going to mark it right where it stops touching the wire. So I have my 90 degree bend. The wire's going parallel with the labial bow wire. And I'm going to make my cut I'm wiping off that little mark you can see on my fingers you can, there's black stuff all over my fingers one thing you can do is uh, either you can use a burr or a, a stone wheel and you can scratch up this piece of wire so the solder has a little bit of a grip a little bit of a mechanical bond I'd like to use the wire cutters it's a little dangerous because you, you could cut the wire, but if you know what you're doing, no big deal. So then, notice I'm I'm holding it flat. There was a notification before your video said that YouTube is now saving live chat. Sweet, it's finally doing it. Okay, we'll see, Steve, when when we watch this later or when I watch this later, if that if all that chat's there. Steve and I were complaining that it wasn't saving all the chats, and that's where the best conversation is. Is uh oh, where my phone? Oh. Okay. So, I'm using my model holder. I'm laying it flat, kind of parallel to the ground. Gravity's holding it down. And so now, I'm going to use my... I'm going to buy some of the stuff. If you'll see it, there's a video of Steve. I think it might have been his Instagram channel. Where he shows how to do... Um, where he shows how to do... He uses a certain type for American Dental Supply. And I'm going to try some of that next time. Aravid, do a video on canine retractor Adam's clasp. Oh, 
I'm not sure I know what that is. You might have to post a picture or something. Time for Google. Yeah, time for Google. While that's setting up, I'm going to Google that. K9 Retractor Adams K9 Retractor? Buckle K9 Retractor. Ooh. Oh, it's got a loop in the middle of it. If that's it. Adams with Incorporated Helix. K9. U loop K9 retractor. Well, that just looks like a labial bow. Helical K9 retractor. K9. K9 retractor. Adams class. You're going to get all used to it, Sawyer, because when you take over the business. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, there's an Adams class showing two teeth. Getting I am getting distracted. Okay. I'll look it up and see if I can do it. Whoa. All these pictures look painful. Canine. Buckle canine retractor. Sir canine. Sir canine retractor. Second one, Adams. They're both separate. I am a dental student, I guess. VDS student. All right, so back to Sawyer's getting keeping me on track. I'll have to look that up and see what that is. That might be something I want to start offering to the doctors. Second one, you said. Oh, cool. All right. Um, so now I'm going to show the soldering part. So I'm going to get my, my flux out, I'm going to get my heat shield out, and my flame, and my solder. So, now, is what? Flame yeah, the flamethrower. This is something I used to do, that I like to do with these soldered canines, uh, is um, put my heat shield in this. I have an old video of me showing how to do it and uh, if you do a bunch of these at once and you solder them all at once it's good to have this uh, so I'm just gonna show how I fill it up and the, I just found the easiest thing is use your finger this is just like a monojet syringe I think you get it from any pharmacy John Inman thanks for your videos very helpful are you related to Don Inman John Donald Inman I have a model holder when I make clear bow retainers. It's handy with clamping holding to form. Yes. Because do you hold it off the edge of the table like this? I don't know if sorry you can get a shot of this. And then do your clear bow like, like this off so you have long. Can you see that? And then, yeah, I, when I used to do clear bows, that, that was perfect for doing clear bows because they can just hang off the table and you don't lose your... Hey, sorry, can you get me a paper towel? Please. About the sink. One or two or three. Just one. So then I put this in and send it. Squish. There, yep. Yeah. Alright, thank you. All right, so that was my little tip of the day. Put your heat shield in here, and actually I didn't even get it from me. I got it from a wire bender that I trained. He just picked up one of these and shoved it in there. I was like, that's a great idea. It's really annoying when the cast keeps on slipping on the desk. Oh, yes, I can't stand it. It's annoying when it slips on here, and I can't imagine it slipping on. So this is great for trim models with a flat base. 
this one is good for untrimmed models. So you just put put it in the teeth right here. In it. So this is a different one. I'm getting distracted again, but I don't. So that's how that one works. And it's the same deal. And I like it for soldering because then I can angle it a certain way. No relation. We are located just north of New Orleans. Oh. Well, I'm glad you're watching. I stick it in my vice grip with suction to the t oh cool yeah try one of these model holders Deborah land of boat racer sorry for distracting that's <laughs> okay that's why it's live that's the best part of this is you can ask questions while I work so I saw this in a magazine and it's flux but it's got a little what you would use for monomer or something uh, tip so, I am going to. I try to get it up underneath the wire. Now I don't have a spot welder or tack welder, which would be handy here. Uh, I think S Steve and I did a show on. Uh, check out the T Rex one. I think he shows his uh, a tack welder that he uses. So this is where this comes in handy, my heat shield. So I'm going to protect. the wires especially the place where I put the zap it on that purple stuff and then of course protect your wire going over the occlusion there and you want to make sure I'm, I'm I'm letting it spread out I'm holding it almost against the model bless you bless you letting it spread out and that where you really get the heat shield is when it seals against the cast all right see I'm, I'm protecting all the exposed wire so I want my solder to run down this uh, area here where the wires are parallel and spin around uh, and then lock in with at that right angle I'll put a little bit more I stick my model holder oh the vice grips for heating the clear but only time I use the vice grip with the holder. I'd like to see a picture of that. Alright, so I'm gonna turn off the lights so I can see my flame. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. With the lights on. Oh, okay, so they're turning off. No, I'm gonna turn this light off. Watch. Can you see above? Can you see the flame? Yeah. I'm going to turn the light off. So now you can see the flame better. Oh. Well, hopefully the camera showed it. So I like to turn my light off. And then I like yeah. to angle it. If I need to angle it more. Because, you know, flux, I mean, solder uses gravity too. So you don't want it to be, I like to be almost flat and have it at an angle. So I'm going to get... Here's my solder, and I just got used to holding it like this. Nothing fancy. Clear, clean off the tarnish. All right, let's see if I can do this. So I'm gonna angle my flame up, away from the model. I'm not gonna go straight at it, because then it's gonna try to get underneath my heat shield and affect my wires. So I'm gonna point it up so I don't get any reflection onto my wire work. So as it's pointing up, I'm going to solder I'm going to keep moving it around until that flux becomes clear. And then I know I'll add a little bit to my solder here. I'm going to add a little ball at the top. And then I'm going to paint it down. This is what I call painting. I'm, I'm feathering it down. And hopefully it'll work. That little ball will relax. And we'll, there we go. It's flowing down, falling down, and we're good. If done right, you only have a little bit of a tip at the top to grind off. But email, you can email to. Uh, he's gonna type it in retainerdesigner at gmail.com. 
That looks like it's spelt wrong. Retainer. T. A I N. E R. Designer. At Gmail. Dot com. There it is. All right. So, if y'all have any questions, you can email me there, uh, and I'll try. I usually try to answer them as best I can, or or comment below. All right. So the other side. I'll use the solder to kind of get the flux to go where I want it to go. It's welding. Yeah, yeah, it's it's officially called brazing, I believe. Mini welding. So I'm not actually attaching the two wires together. I'm surrounding them with another, a third metal. And there we go. You see how it, when it gets shiny, I know it, it's got surrounded in a, underneath the wire. Looking forward to the picture, Deborah. All right, there is. Let me steam clean this off, and you can see the solder joint better. lights back on so there we go there's the solder uh, joint uh, hold the solder joint to the camera closer so we can see it I got, the, oh. got it can yeah. you see it there we go. so uh, this little nubbin is all you have to grind off. You might be able to, if you put enough solder on it, you don't have to do much at the end. You just pumice it. So you just take your little burr as you're doing your acrylic, as you're trimming the acrylic, you just take your little burr and eat, hit that little nubbin right there. Show it from this side. And if you cut it just right, you won't even have that little nubbin to take off. It'll, be, it'll look like that. What are you laughing at? I'm so proud. Oh, you were steam cl Oh, you were steam cleaning. I was just dancing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Should I fire you or are you are you actually making the the stream more exciting? I'm so proud. He <laughs> he dances awesome. I can't believe you're dancing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you cuz I've seen you dance. Oh. Yep, you're official. I'm in the Matrix. Yeah, you, all 19 people I've seen you now online. Hooray! All right, so I'm I can do Sarah or your moves or case. <laughs> Those are pretty. I'm gonna say they're Sarah's moves, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> I can't dance. All right, well, well, what time is it? Uh, there we are. No clocks. 12:41. 1241. All right. We got time where I can bend another one or sprinkle this one. I'll leave it. Whoever puts on there, whoever I can either sprinkle or bend another one. So up to y'all. Y'all vote. Nice moves, buddy. Oh. Not to mention the fine hairdo he's got going. Yeah. You can tell it's spring break in the Tippet household. Oh, there we go. It's 
Sprinkle, please. All right, first one up. First come, first serve. All right, we have... All right, Cobalt Blue. All right, bear with us as we change cameras around. Actually, let me just, I'll just sprinkle right here. Sawyer won't mind the smell, right? I haven't smelled it, so I don't know. Oh, you'll smell it. Or you've grown up around it so much. Definitely the thumbnail. Yep, that's going to be the thumbnail. That'll get some views in, wouldn't it? Yeah. I see a little pit right there from 3D printing. Let me get a another paper towel. You got another paper towel? Oh, you're welcome. There is my cobalt blue. That's what this is calling for. I have my name insert. I need someone to get me. Yes, sir. A paper towel. Okay. No. So. That should have been the thumbnail. I wish you could have seen that. Earbuds. He he snagged his earbuds. On the chair and got jerked back. All right, I'm gonna refill this this. My 416 fine clears. There we go. I think I hit the lamp. Is that out of the view? Top view now? I might have to hit the headphone thing again. I'm getting signal over here. <clears throat> Alright. Sorry while I clear out the wire bin. I haven't sprinkled over here yet. All right, sprinkling and cool it. Ah. Do you duplicate the 3D model to work on it? I can't find separate works on 3D models, none. I could tell you <laughs> the separator you use, but there has been a big kerfuffle on the internet that I've been following. Uh, Facebook, uh, check out uh, National Association of Orthodontic Laboratory. You'll see the debate. There is a company that's suing other company or labs for using a separator on 3D models. So that's something to look forward to. But we are going to unite as lab owners and fight this. So if you would like to come on board and fight this, um, we are trying the JBC acrylic to acrylic separator. Yes. Good point, Johnny. Let me pull that out here real quick. And I did use that on here. I have the JBC acrylic to acrylic separator because mainly these 3D printed models are, um, they got methyl methacrylate in the resin, so it sticks to it. And I actually tried a little bit in there and of acrylic and it came right off. So you, you paint it and then uh, you let it dry and you paint it again. So... Uh, it's JBC acrylic to acrylic separator, but not 3D printed model separator. You cannot say that anymore. I know it's a weird. It 
people will watch this video years from now and go, what? I bet. I'm going to point this down. Since I don't use a model holder to sprinkle with. Depends on the material you're using to make the model. Not Yes, that is very true. Uh, I know Form Lab Gray is very easy to sprinkle on from what I've heard. This is from Envision Tech Vita. And this is one of the bad ones to sprinkle on. So that's why I just went and duplicated it. Just so I don't run any problems. All right, so I'm going to start by putting the name insert in. So in Texas, it's required by law. You have to put a patient identification in. So uh, I like to okay. put it on the tissue side. Is that a jewel? That's a, a Envision Tech from the printer. I don't have an Envision Tech. I use a printer service, and they used Envision Tech Vita or something like that. It's called... All right, so I'm putting a little bit of separator down. I'm going to go off camera a little bit because this is the name of a real patient. Or you can switch to this camera. Wait, which camera? The computer kind of camera? Yep. That's what it is. Oh, no, it froze. Got it? Yep. All right, so I'll put the name in there. And I, I have it facing the tissue side. Uh, helps if you're doing designs and stuff. You don't have to try to fit the name insert around. It's just something we have to deal with in Texas. Actually, it's up to the doctor to do it. Yeah, it's very bad, and I bet it's a cheaper option for printing materials. Yeah, I don't think... If you're talking about the JBC stuff, the acrylic to acrylic separator, I think it's... I've heard it's really good stuff. Pretty much universal. Oh, also, uh, the what you're saying, uh, no, I'm late. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Then Danilo, 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 it'll be recorded. You can go back later on and watch it. I'm trying to get these situated where my hands aren't in the way too bad. Can you smell it now, Sawyer? No. Because <laughs> you grew up in a lab, so. I did. Yeah, you don't know oh, yeah. you grew up in a lab, but you did. 3 a.m. in the morning, I had to wake you up so you can sleep in the floor of the lab while I finish pumicing. While I get your mom to finish pumicing retainers for me. She was not happy with me. Now, you were watching, remember Boo? It's Boo. I remember, oh, yeah, that's, that's what it reminds that me one. of. You, we'd play that on the computer. It was a weird show. It was a weird show, yeah. But it was only, about the only thing on Hulu back then. Before they added all the shows. Yeah, it was like this one evil apple one or something. There's an evil apple? I can smell it up here. <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to smell like. I don't know what to tell you. I can't believe you can't smell this. I'm not using my vent. Put a little dusting on here. Yeah, we got a big wind thing coming through. So I've, I do one side, and so I'm going to start the other side. I put a nice layer of powder on there so it won't slump on me while I work on the other side. I will say I always get a great fit anyway by duplicating 3D model. Yeah, if I make a stone mix thick, but a little to no shrinkage. Oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Oh, man, this blue really shows up in this light. I really like it. It's called Cobalt yeah. Blue. It's from JBC. 
You can see now where I've sprinkled the powder, how the monomer soaking it up. We call that nose blind. Oh yeah, nose blind. Yeah. Yeah, I can smell it, and I'm supposed to be immune to the stuff. I can't smell anything. I'm like, here, let me just. I can smell. Uh, yeah, I can't smell. Oh, uh, your nose is stuffed up or something. So what I try to accomplish is the right ratio. I'm going to smooth it out by putting some powder on it, surprisingly enough. Switch to the clear. It, I think it puts a nice clear coat on it. There you go. Now I like to use my finger to pat it down a little bit. It helps, you know, get rid of bubbles or pockets of powder or you know and, and it smooths it you can kind of feel the thickness of it put a little down there the color looks very appetizing yes a lot of her colors jbc you know when i say her i mean priscilla the owner of it she designed all the colors she's got like a, a cranberry and a raspberry and a uh and they look very appetizing Well, you do put them in your mouth. All right, so I'm going to cut it. Have my sharp knife here. I'm going to start on the side that I sprinkled first because it's already. It it kind of goes through stages. I call it like the wet sand stage, and that's when it's first, you know, being sprinkled. And then it goes through like a gel where it kind of gels a little bit. Then it goes through a rubbery stage, and that's. It's best to cut it at the rubbery stage. And then it goes through. Steve, I hadn't watched your heat cure versus cold cure. I should have watched that before this. But I plan on watching it after this. I want to see the different methods you used. So this is the rubbery stage. Yeah, it's very satisfying. So this is a rubbery stage. See how it's doughy, I guess. It's the doughy stage is the official term. So I'll go ahead and make my cuts now in the wet acrylic so that it uh, it saves on trimming time later. So I love this little tool. It's got a sharp little edge. I think it's just a, a clay tool. JBC sells it. I just ordered it when I ordered my kit. And uh, it's got a little scoop that I like to scoop out the acrylic with. There you go. And one little thing I've learned. Keep using your bail. We'll start to glow in the dark. <laughs> oh, I bet stuff. Ocean blue acrylic powder and blue monomer. Nice. Yeah, I bet that looks really good. I like mixing them like that. That's how I get my maroon being in um, being in Texas. You know, we have Texas A&M. I don't know if you've heard of it, but they're maroon and white are their colors, so I get a lot of those. And burnt orange. But my... Uh... All right, I'm going to be ready to put this in the acrylic. Put this in the pressure pot. So there we go. I got it semi where I want it. And you could clean up a little more if you want. You got, I don't know, 10 minutes. Depends on the temperature. If it's cold outside, you got a little longer. If it's hot outside or humid, you don't have much long, much time. I think I see a thin spot here. I'm going to add a little, just a little bit. There we go. In the pressure pot it goes. And Sori wants me to check my email for some reason. All right.
What am I checking for? I watched Teacher vs. Cold Cure. It was pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I want to see it. Uh, and there was a comment down there. I thought he was talking about heat cure like as in dentures, too. So that uh, I'm glad he cleared that up. Because I use a pressure pot that has heat and pressure, and it gets rid of all uh, porosity and bubbles and I think makes a harder uh, thing. Why am I checking my email? I don't think she sent it yet. No, not there yet. She probably hadn't hadn't come through yet. Anyway, that's it. I'm gonna leave it there. Sawyer, thank you, Sawyer, for switching the videos for me and providing the entertainment. So keep a watch out for that thumbnail and. Uh, until, uh, thanks for watching on a Thursday, my wire bending Wednesday on a Thursday, and uh, until then, happy bending. <laughs> Are you going to end it?